Good evening and welcome to the December 10th, 2018 meeting of the Board of Selectmen. In accordance with open meeting law, I'd like to announce that this meeting is being recorded and ask if there's anyone in the audience also recording the meeting. Seeing none, could we please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have no public comment. There are no public hearings or presentations. We have no communications. Moving on to Board of Selectmen general items. I'll entertain a motion to um, take item 5A and 5B together. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So voted. So we have a one-day indoor entertainment license for Auburn Youth and Family Services for the Dancing with the Stars fundraiser. And we also have a one-day beer and wine license for Auburn Youth and Family Services um, Dancing with the Stars fundraiser at the Auburn Mall on Saturday, January 26th. Is there someone here for that event? Mrs. Kennedy, if you could come up, come up and join us, please. We can hear you a little better from here. So you're here for two licenses. Could yes, you, I am. Could you tell us a little bit about what's going on? I know you've been here in the past. Yes, um, this year it's going to be a little. Bit, it's going to be a little bit different. We're doing a showcase of dances where it's our 10th anniversary. So we've invited everybody that has danced for the past 10 years to come back and dance at this event. Very nice. And where is it being held? It's at the Auburn Mall. Um, and the Auburn Mall is actually going to give us more space than we had last year. So we're looking forward to that. And we have a snow date of the following Saturday. Okay. In regards to the um, the alcohol, is it the same um, setup as it was last yes, year? Yes, it will be. Okay. Do members have any questions? You've had a pretty successful event over the course of the year. Ten years, yes, we have. Wow, and it just continues to increase. It does it does? Oh, that's <laughs> the best. Well, I just wish you the very best. Thank I you. I'm Thank very you. much support of this. Thank you. Are there any questions regarding, um, we can take them, it will, we'll need two separate motions, but we're first on the entertainment license. Are there any questions or comments? Is there a motion? I make a motion uh, in order to approve um, the license, provide that all applicable requirements of the state and town and any of its departments, boards, and commissions have been fulfilled. Said license is subject to all the conditions stated upon it. Failure to comply with any and all the conditions shall invalidate the license and render it null and void with the conditions of the DCG to be placed on the license. Is there a second? second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Is there an additional motion regarding the one-day indoor entertainment license? I'd like to make a motion to waive the license fee for this event. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So voted. And regarding the one-day beer and wine license, is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we approve the license, provided that all applicable requirements of state and town and its departments, boards, and commissions have been fulfilled. Said license subject to all conditions stated upon it. Fair comply with any and all conditions shall be relevant to the license and render it null and void. And what conditions will be seeking to be placed on the license? Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Is there an additional motion on the one day bear and wine license? I make a motion we waive the license fee for the event. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So voted. So if you could just give us a date again and to let our listening audience know how they can get tickets or Certainly. contact um, you. The date is January 26th and it's at 6.30 at the Auburn Mall. And last year we sold completely out so we're not going to sell any tickets at the door. Everything has to be purchased online through Auburn Youth and Family Services. Great. Thank, well, thank you. you so much everyone. Thank you. Thank you. The and work good luck. has begun. Thank you. Thank good you. luck. Thank you. Quick question. Yes. Um, are, are they still uh, having the um, rehearsal for the children? Uh, don't they do? Yes, we are before? working on that right now. Okay. Trying right. to Is that it. something that needs to be announced? or? We will announce it. It will be Friday night before. We're just not sure exactly where it's going to be. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome thank to you. come up, you know, if we have public comment to just make any announcement. announcement. All right. Thank okay. you. Appreciate it. Thanks thank so you, everyone. Much. 
Moving on, we have our annual license renewal list for 2019. Enclosed is a list of annual license renewals for 2019. They were reviewed by the treasurer collector and the DCG with no issues indicated. Um, in um, your packet, you do have a revised list as three came in um, since we received our packet. Are there any questions or comments on these licenses? I make a motion we approve the, uh, the license renewals, provided that all the applicable requirements of the state and town and any of its departments, boards, and commissions have been fulfilled. Said license subject to all conditions stated upon it. Failure to comply with any and all the conditions shall invalidate the licenses and render it render them null and void with the conditions of the DCG to be placed on all the licenses. Second. Is there any discussion under the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So voted. And is there an additional vote? Um, Sharon, how many um, licenses are outstanding now? Um, there's approximately 19. 19. Um, eight of them being drain layers, so. And so our policy is if they don't get their license renewal application in by uh, December 31st and they have to go through the new licensing process? Correct, mm -hmm. except the drain layers, they don't right. have that previous. Right. So, so we have, as you just heard, 19 outstanding licenses, eight of them being um, drain layers licenses. I'm looking at um, agenda item two. Do we want to make a conditional vote? So I'll make a motion um, to approve any of those additional licenses uh, that come in by December 31st, 2018, and that they have no outstanding issues. Second. Is there any discussion under this? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. Thank you. We have no gift acceptance. We have no proclamations or recognitions. Um, under town manager items? Yes, through the chair, thank you. Uh, I just wanted to let the board know, I believe I sent you an email, um, also want to let the public know that after a long process that we have to follow under Mass General Law, we did award the contract for the uh, design services portion of it, which is really it's a feasibility study for public safety facility. It has to, under the law, it has to fall under design services even though we're not designing a building at this point. We're just doing a feasibility to see one of three options, uh, whether each of the fire headquarters, West Street and the police station should either be expanded, uh, renovated as is within the existing footprint or potentially build new. So that is what the study is about. Uh, I wanna thank, we have a great designer selection committee. As you all know, um, under the law we had to uh, appoint a designer selection committee that interviewed. Uh, we received five firms that bid on this RFQ. They interviewed four of them, and then they rank the four, and Tecton was uh, unanimously selected to be um, their recommended choice. So we did uh, work with town council and Tecton, and we do have an agreement in place now, and that is in your packet. The cost is uh, $150,000, which is the amount that was appropriated at town meeting to do this, and the study will take approximately nine months and it began uh, probably about a week ago. As soon as, as, soon as this was, um, that the contract was signed, the company's hitting the ground running. They came with great references. Um, they did very, very well in the interview process. And uh, we're looking forward to working with them. Thank you. Are there any questions or comments on that? Um, when you move on, if you could go on to your holiday craft show. I think Mr. La Liberty may have some questions on 6B. So. Could you take 6C first, please? Sure. Um, the holiday craft show, I believe there is a flyer in your packets. And the information is online as well. But our annual holiday craft fair is this Saturday, December 15th. Uh, and it is from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at the Auburn High School. We have a snow date scheduled for the Sunday, December 16th. And it doesn't look like we're going to need it, which is good news. Um, so. We hope we will be able to hold this on December 15th, this Saturday. And again, we this is an exciting event. It's a really nice community event, chance uh, for people to do their Christmas shopping and socialize with uh, neighbors and friends. We have 80 
I believe, a little more than 80 craft vendors right now, which is great. We, we just get such a, a great turnout for this. And Santa will also be making an appearance uh, between 10 and 2. So make sure if you're bringing children, you know uh, Santa's schedule. He's very busy this time of year. So between 10 and 2, he's made time for Auburn. And we also have activities, food, um, all kinds of children's activities. And you can see more of this and other events that we have on auburnguide.com. So um, I'm just going to ask that you hold item 6B just until Mr. La Liberty gets here. Um, we'll move on to tabled items. I don't believe there's any update on this. We'll have it at the first January meeting. Yes. Is that correct? And um, moving on to Board of Selectmen member items, a request for the board to vote to ask the town manager to recreate the property tax committee. Mr. Carpenter. Yes, we did this a couple of years ago. I think Mr. Burton was on for the board. And as we know from our last classification meeting, there is more work to be done that we can help those who are struggling paying their taxes. So I, it was suggested and I thought, well, no time like the present. So that's, that's the reason for the ask. And do you want to give us an update on the status of the committee? Uh, through the chair, we did appoint a committee uh, last time. And is that in here? I don't have the memo. This is what the memo Oh, thank was. you. Thank you. And uh, we had presented to the board, and I would uh, suggest that we do the same thing again this time, because this is what the board had voted. So last time, we had recommended that we uh, create a tax abatement and exemption advisory group. And that was consisting of one member of the Board of Selectmen, one member of the Finance Committee, one member of the Council on Aging, uh, the Chief Financial Officer, the Chief Assessor, and the Senior Center slash Elder Affairs Director. So that was a good blend uh, that we had last time. I think that we should do that once again. And in which case, if the Board wishes to go ahead and proceed with this, uh, then I would also suggest that you appoint a volunteer from your, your board to serve on this committee. I believe last time through the chair, I think we had either two or three meetings. Uh, this time it, was, it will probably be two. I think one meeting was just to review all the information that was already out there. I believe Mr. Uh, Berthium was on it. Yes, that, um, I think it was three meetings. I think it was three. So I, I would anticipate no more than three. I think probably the overview won't have to be as detailed this time because it was done just two years ago, but just so everyone understands the parameters. Okay, so, so in recreating the property tax, um, abatement committee. Um, is it your intention to reappoint the same members where they've already begun the work on it? Well, the the board of selectmen would be up to you. Mm -hmm. uh, the finance committee would be up to the finance committee who they'd like to appoint. And uh, likewise with the council on aging, we would ask them for their uh, recommendations. And obviously uh, the chief financial officer, Ed Kazanovich, the chief assessor, Cindy, Cosgrove, and last time we had Cheryl Westerman because she was the acting senior center director, but now we have mm -hmm. uh, Jean Boulette, so I would recommend Jean Boulette and or Cheryl. I, I would leave it to them to decide, but we just need to make sure we have senior center representation. It would be nice for consistency uh, to ha try to have some of the same members, but in the case of the Council on Aging, I'm not sure if the person who participated is, is still on the Council on Aging. Okay. Is there any discussion on this? Mr. Carpenter. Just, I believe we also had a town meeting member on the committee as well, so. so. I'm sorry, yes, I, that was the next paragraph. It was separate. The board had then voted, correct, I'm sorry, this is the vote, uh, to add a member of the Veterans Division, um, which is our, our Veterans Affairs Director and a town meeting member. I think, um, obviously, that would still be Larry Corbin um, mm -hmm. participating on that. To the best of my knowledge, there are no changes under the law that we can make on the veterans program, but it's still obviously worth just taking a quick look at it. But I think the bulk of what we need to look at uh, is if there's any uh, flexibility on some of the income levels that we have in other programs. Um, and, and certainly that's one of them. So you're correct, it was voted to add a town meeting member and the veterans affairs director. Well, I'll make a motion to um, put the uh, recreate the property tax committee 
um, and ask the yeah. town manager to uh, put that together and uh, I would be in great support of that. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on the motion? I'll just say I'd, I'd be happy to serve again to, to keep the momentum going. So and I can add that to the, uh, I'll amend my motion for final birth you to uh, service a member. Serve, yep. So the motion is to recreate the um, property tax committee having uh, Mr. Berthium service as board of selectmen member. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So voted. So um, we are going to go back to town manager item 6B. Yes, thank you. So back on, um, I, I believe it was in early October, we had come to the board and asked for a vote to allow us to apply for up to $150,000 for the Stanton Foundation grant for the dog park. Uh, and the board did vote to allow us to do that. That was based on an estimate of the fundraising goal by the Fur Friends of $15,000. and. Um, once we sat down with them and started to go over the budget and looked at the size and various amenities and what we could include and what we don't necessarily need to include and tried to make some changes, it became clear that it was going to be difficult to stay within a budget of 150, uh, even $180,000. Uh, we looked at 14 other dog parks and that were funded by the Stanton Foundation recently. And we did a quick analysis of the cost per square foot, the average cost of the dog park, uh, the types of materials they used, how many benches they had. So just to try to compare and see where we would land in, in the pricing, recognizing that if we, when we go out to bid, that price could change. And the average cost for a park, uh, and they were all around the size that were putting forward, the average cost was $205,000. So we could whittle it down to something very, very uh, small uh, and not have a lot of amenities, or we could go for a, a higher dollar amount. So we did have a great meeting with the Fur Friends and just uh, asked them how they wanted to proceed on that, if they wanted to raise additional funds. Uh, we did point out that for every dollar that they raise, they will get another 90 cents from the Stanton Foundation. So if they did have an appetite to raise a little bit more, then they would get that back nine times, uh, which is attractive. It, it makes it for a better package. So they agreed to raise uh, $20,000, or make that their, their new goal of $20,000. So I was going to originally come in tonight and ask if we could increase the authorization to apply from $150,000 to $180,000, because the $20,000 is a, the 10% match, which means we could apply for one eighty. dollars But just in case, and that is their goal, and once uh, they reach that goal, we can go ahead and put the application in. My only thought was, with asking you to go a little higher is just in case they had a donor that came in and they ended up raising 21,000 or a donor came in and gave them more than they were asking and they ended up at 22. We didn't want to have to come back to the board a third time and increase that grant dollar amount again. So what I would suggest is if the board could give us authorization to apply for up to $225,000, which is the maximum you can apply for under the, uh, under the formula that's allowed, this this would need a $25,000 match. We have not suggested, nor have the fur friends suggested that they're going to raise 25,000. Mm -hmm. We're just making sure if a donation comes in before the application goes out that they're allowed to accept that donation and apply it toward the, the grant so they could get that nine to one match on the dollars they raise. So if the board would not mind um, increasing that dollar amount and allowing for authorization of up to 225, recognizing that most likely they're, uh, they're doing a phenomenal job and they're probably gonna be reaching their $20,000 mark shortly. In which case, if that is the end of where they're going, we will then apply for 180. Again, with the 20,000, that gives us a $200,000 budget, which is right in the ballpark of the other, uh, all the other parks that we looked at. We do have a meeting with them next, uh, the 18th, uh, with the Fur Friends, to go over some revised concept plans and working together collaboratively with them, come up with a basic uh, concept that we want to put in for our grant application. Other questions, Mr. Berthiam? Um Just a point of clarification. You mentioned that um, they would need 
uh, twenty five thousand to max, but it, would it be twenty two five? It's only ten percent, right? Well, it's it's ten percent of the construction cost. So the construction cost would be two hundred fifty thousand oh, minus yeah. To, so a construction cost of two hundred fifty thousand would mean that they would have to contribute twenty right. twenty five thousand, which would mean we could apply for the remaining two twenty five. Um, but again, the, the goal right now is the 20000 That would be excellent. We, we could definitely do a, a nice park with that amount. Um, but again, I was just trying to make sure that if they got a donor that came in between the time you took your vote tonight and the time we put this application in, that they don't have to turn that donor away or not use that money because you can get for every, again, for every dollar, you're going to get $9 um, from the Stanton Foundation. Go ahead, Mr. Uh, I'll, I'll just, um, should we just make a motion and then open it up for discussion? Sure. So I'll make the motion that we amend the previously taken vote by the board uh, for authorization of the Stanton Foundation Dog Park Grant application to authorize up to uh, $225,000 by the town, uh, which would have the 10% match. I'll second that. Okay, so we're under discussion now. Is there a discussion? I'll, Mr. I'll just say that, um, you know, I, I think it's uh, it's great that the, the for our friends were diligent and, and um, you know, raising the money that they've raised so far. And um, I'm, I'm now, you know, I was probably one of the ones that was a little bit apprehensive to just uh, okay everything in the beginning, but I, I feel very uh, comfortable now and, and um, uh, in making that motion. So um, I just, um, you said you're meeting with them on the 18th? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so is it, um, if, if on the 18th, if they tell you that they've met their fundraising goal, mm -hmm. um, is it your plan to move forward with the um, grant application? We will move forward with the application. On the 18th, we need to meet with them to discuss uh, you know, assuming they could come in with the 20000 which would be tremendous, we need to work with them to look at uh, the concept plans. DPW did come up with a couple. They were out of the budget of what we could do. We don't want to, as town administration, m make all decisions on this without them. They're, they're our partners in this, so we need to meet with them. So depending on how the meeting goes on the 18th, as far as the design, the layout, the size, uh, all of that would have to be decided on the 18th so we can go forward and then start preparing the grant application. Uh, hopefully it will be done shortly after the first of the year. I'd like to say it will be done before the end of the year, but if we meet on the 18th, that only gives us, uh, we're looking at calendar five business days when you take out the holidays, okay. and the weekends it gives us five days to pull the application together from the date of the meeting. I, I don't know that we could do it in five days, but certainly our goal is yeah. to get it done as quick as we can. Yeah. And so I don't, and I think Tristan may have seen it, so I don't want to speak out of school here, but there was an announcement on social media, wasn't there, about the fundraising goal? Yeah, yeah so, so it's my understanding um, that they did announce on social media that they have met their fundraising goal, so um, congratulations to them. I mean, it was, a, it was a small group of individuals who worked really hard and um, worked many, many events to to raise these funds. So um, so I believe that they announced that they had That's met great. their fundraising goal. And um, also I just want to confirm we're, you know, just for the record, we're not asking them to increase, because they oh. first committed mm -hmm. to the 15,000, now they've right. committed to the 20. We're not asking them for an increase. This is just, if a, you know, a, a sponsor came in at the last minute, That's right. it was uh, to allow them to take that gift mm -hmm. so we could include that in the Correct. grant application. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there anything else? I just, uh, uh, through the chair, I just have a question, um, again, um, for a point of clarification. So when we apply for the grant to, to the Stanton Foundation, do we have to specify that we're going for 200000 or 250000 Yes. Um, so we're, we're authorizing the, the uh, town to to go up to 225,000, but really we're authorizing for them to go up to 250 with a $25,000 match, is that For the correct? construction costs. For the construction correct. cost. And, and if that's the case, um, yet, should, shouldn't we be like filling the grant application 
out for $250,000, not for $200,000? Uh, through the chair, we'll, we would fill it out at this point if they have hit their goal of 20000 Our intent was to fill it out for 180000 because the construct the grant match has to be based on the construction cost. So the construction cost of 200000 would require a $20,000 grant match. So that would be their 20000 So the construction cost, when, when you put the grant together, you have to put together a budget for the construction. Of course, it all changes the minute you go out to bid. Um, but for purposes of applying for the grant, you have to put together your preliminary concept plan, and you have to put together a fairly detailed budget to show how much the park is going to cost. So it, we would be preparing it for a $200,000 park, which would mean $180,000 grant for the construction, it also means a $20,000 design grant that we would apply for. And that is 100% paid for by the Stanton Foundation, so no match is needed for that. So on a $200,000 construction, you'll get 20, uh, you'll get 10%, which is $20,000 for the design, and then uh, you have to show your your receipts that your money is in place for the match. So we are actually, our intent is to apply for 200,000. Again, in between now and the 18th, we were only asking to go a little higher should a donor come in that wasn't here tonight. Um, I, I didn't want them to turn away even if they got $500. Uh, between now and next Tuesday when we start finalizing our budget, I wanted to make sure that they could incorporate that $500 or whatever they got because they are gonna get the match if we put in for it. Uh, I don't see us needing to go to 225. Um, that would that would be if a, a donor came in and gave them five thousand dollars between now and Tuesday. I, I'm sure they don't anticipate that happening either. But this way, they're not getting penalized if they do get a, a last-minute donor. Thank you. Is there anything else on this? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I'll abstain. Mr. Carpenter abstained. Thank you very much, and I just want to again thank the fur friends and the group that we're working with. They've um, they've been great. We're looking forward to our meeting and getting this application finalized. Once we get it in, I will let you know um, and share that with you. Okay. And our last item under Board of Selectmen member items: discussion on potential amendments to Mass General Law Chapter 18, Section 13B. Request to outreach the state delegation for information and discussion. Mr. Law Liberty. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, our, at our last meeting, we talked about this a little bit. Um, I know Mr. Carpenter had suggested some um, suggestions with the uh, 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 Chapter 18, Section 13B that we had looked at adopting. Um, and I know I mentioned it to Representative Frost at the Christmas tree lighting that we uh, would be talking about this and maybe uh, coming together to bring those suggestions to the legislature. I don't know if other board members were interested. Um, I'd personally pursue it. Um, I don't know if other members want to pursue it as a board uh, or really what other members are thinking. So that's really why I put it on or asked to have it put on. <clears throat> members have any questions or comments? So I just, you know, I'd, I know that we had a brief discussion on it. I just want to know what specifically we're looking to amend. What's, what other specifics are you, are, you, are you personally looking at? Well, <clears throat> I know the, the, what was suggested here at our last meeting, I think, from Mr. Carpenter was um, looking into doing uh, an electronic notification um, to see if that would be an option. And then I think there was something else to, uh, was it regarding um, access to records? Um, I don't remember at this point. <laughs> I think it was uh, something along the lines of uh, so no one could use it to, um, if the town were to adopt it, uh, a person couldn't abuse. Uh, oh, yeah, they couldn't use it for uh, the purposes of revenge. Sometimes for public records requests, they are used as nuisances and to harass staff. Public records so they wouldn't be used for as a nuisance or as a means to harass or cause the town to, or any community to have to go to expense for something that people aren't truly serious about, so. And this is in regards to the notification? This would be in regard to utilizing the actual statute.
Mr. Holstrom. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think um, from our discussion last time, I was not happy with having something like this. I think that uh, the board um, being involved in something like this could uh, be interpreted uh, falsely by uh, individuals looking at the information. Uh, you know, some people may have uh, information that others do not have. Uh, there may be, uh, well, we look at it a little bit differently and the interpretation is, well, the interpretation will kill anybody. So I guess it's one of those things I would not be uh, supporting this as a board. If uh, an individual wanted to go and take a look at this and uh, review that information and go forward with it, that's fine. But I think as a board, I think uh, I couldn't support this because I don't want to uh, be looked at as, you know, uh, swaying one way or another, being biased or, uh, you know, with decisions one way or another on anything that would come before us. So uh, I would stay clear of that. So I'll just say if it's, if it's only... Um and again, we don't, we don't have, we had it in our packet last time. If it's only the electronic notification um, that we're looking to amend, um, you know, the, the, the voters have to have um, the same access to, um, to information. All voters have to have the same access to information. And I just, I mean, not every voter has, has access to electronics, so I can't, I, I personally just can't see the legislature amending this or the Attorney General's office allowing this. I'm not sure if there were other amendments that you were looking to discuss. I mean, if you want to review it and bring it back to us, but just for the purpose of um, looking to amend it for an electronic notification, um, I, I, I don't. I just don't feel that all voters would be getting the same information because they are not all and not everyone has access to um, electronic data. So, yes. I just like to say that I mean the way I'm reading uh, this item, um, Mr. Liberty would like to reach out to state delegation um, for information, and, um, and I would support. Um, him going out and getting information. I'm always happy to hear um, information that, you know, something that may come come by. I, I also was um, against uh, us putting anything out there right now, um, doing any kind of mailing, but um, I, I always, you know, I, I'm always in favor of going and getting information. So uh, I would support if Mr. Liberty wanted to reach out um, to any of our uh, state legislators um, for, for information or ideas, um, I think we should, you know, certainly um, support him going out and doing that. We're not voting to accept anything or amend anything. We're just letting him go out and get information. So, and, and certainly, I'm not looking to tie Mr. Low Liberty Sands in doing anything. It's whether we support it as, as a board. Um, I, you know, what, so you're, we're authorizing him to go out and have, get information and discussion on what? Is Mr. Low Liberty going out and presenting as a member of the Board of Selectmen that we've allowed him to do this and say, I want to know if we can send out notification electronically? Because as a board member, I don't support that. So, Mr. Carpenter, you had your hand up first. Yeah. I mean, I, I think we need to look at it. It's an imperfect home rule petition. I think we were also talking about utilizing town resources such as we just talked about tonight, social media. Um, rather than hamstring somebody into we have to go down this particular tunnel, um, to me, I will support uh, and I'll work with Mr. Liberty to try and see if there is anything we can do to improve it. It was an option for electronic mail as a means to reduce expense to the communities. Um, and I'm sure there is a way in which it could be done, um, much like we do with Code Red. We ask our citizens, how do you prefer to receive your notifications? So Code Red offers you at least five different ways of getting something. So instead of saying, well, not everybody has, well, not everybody's on social media either, but 
And I certainly don't want people getting information from social media from those individuals who are necessarily, they may be pro or con, or they may just want to be individuals who want to create dissension or question or impugn the integrity of the people who are bringing something forward, which is why I support at least investigating it, because I do think as a community, just like the Secretary of State produces this, I don't hear him being accused of being biased. I, I'm not going to be afraid of somebody accusing me of being biased. I'm sure people think I am biased in some regards. Um, I'm not going to let that prevent me from trying to give more information from a referee, for lack of a better word, so that you're not just getting all this junk out there that, you know, this one says this, this one says that, you know, and, and the public is just going to turn it, turn it off because there's no neutral arbiter. And I don't want to see town council spending 15 hours or 50 hours trying to write something, but I do think that we can look at it and see if there's a way that the town can provide something to the voters, and we've done it in the past, so, you know, on very charged issues, and I don't recall anybody accusing anybody of being biased, but, you know, there's always someone who's going to say something about anything, so I will support doing it. I'll happily work with them to try and see what we can do, but in the end, it may just be that there's no improvement, that it's so flawed that it's not worth pursuing. But I think it's, you know, we shouldn't say no or shoot holes in something before we've even started from the gate. So, so I just want to be just, I want to have a better understanding and be clear on what we're voting on because we've taken a position of not supporting um, adopting this law, which would send out information. And I believe that's what you were just talking about is getting information out to the voters, All right, which, which is much different than a discussion on amending the mass general law. So I just want to be clear as to what we're looking at and where we're, what we're asking the legislature to do. I would say currently we're not asking them to do anything. We're looking into potential amendments, if they be out there, language, whatever, perhaps talking to the senator's office, talking to the representative's office, seeing what we can do. In the end, it could amount to nothing. It could be absolutely unworkable, but I think it's something that, you know, we've, we've certainly given uh, open license to other members to pursue their interests. I don't see why we're being so particular on this one, but, you know. Mr. Liberty. I'm not asking for anything in particular here. I'm not even asking for a vote tonight. I just wanted to continue the discussion that we left off with at our last meeting, which was, um, we had talked about maybe there are ways to improve this this law. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I was just asking to reach out to the legislature, either as a board or an individual, or to pursue this. Um, just wanted to uh, let the other members know and see what, what input we have. Um, so I don't think there's uh, anything to really vote on right now um, or to pursue it immediately. This is really just a, a discussion on what, what issues people had with the law and what suggestions we might want to bring to uh, our representatives uh, in the legislature. So. so, so, and thank you for that, but that's what your last comment was. Look at it and bring to the legislature any recommendations we may have. And I think that we're, con you know, we're putting the cart before the horse. Like, I think we need to review this, have discussion of what amendments we're looking to go forward with. Okay, well, that's what I, I want to start with, yeah. Mr. If, if I may, I, I don't think Mr. Liberty has an amendment that he wants to propose. He he's just kind of saying that um, through the board he wants to reach out to our legislature um, delegates or, or whoever um, to discuss what the law does now and if there could be any kind of um, 
amendments that, that might be proposed. He'd come back to us, he'd suggest what he found out. We would vote to, to then make the amendment or not. So I, 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 I don't know why we're belaboring this. It, he's not asking for an amendment. He's, he's just simply saying, I mean, he didn't even really have to come to the board to do it. He could have done it on his own and, and not even discuss it with the board. So I, I'm just saying I support anyone that wants to go out and get information on something and, and bring it back to me, and I'm happy to, to listen to it. I voted against last meeting um, you know, our attorney spending a, a money to to try to define us each side of a a vote or or a question. Um, I'm not uh, in favor of spending uh, money to send out mailings to all registered voters in the town of Auburn. Um, and and I will if Mr. Liberty came back with that proposal for an amendment, I'll probably vote against it again. But he, you know, he might find some things out that that might be very interesting for us to hear. So that's all. I'm, I'm just saying, go for it. You know, I, I, again, I don't. Do we even need to make a motion? Do we even need to vote? I'm, I'm just saying, I support him for going out and getting more information. Mr. Low Liberty. One thing I'll say that I think is the reason I'm struggling with it. I, I voted for it. I was fine with the, uh, the chapter the way it was written. So I really didn't have any amendments to come to the board with to say that the legislature should pass this. So I guess that's why I threw it on our agenda to really get input from those who didn't support it, what they thought could change or what they, uh, they thought would make it better um, that we could, we could discuss and then move forward with if, if that was what we chose to do. Make a motion we vote to authorize Mr. Liberty to investigate potential amendments to Mass General Law Chapter 18, Section 13B, up to and including talking to the offices or the actual elected representatives in our legislature and include any member who may wish to join him in that endeavor. I'll second that. Just under discussion, um, we, we it's, uh, to me, it's in the presentation. Are you asking the delegation to to look into amendments, or is I mean, if we're looking for an amendment, we should be creating that amendment mm -hmm. and requesting it. We you don't ask the legislature. We don't like this bill. How can you change it? Well, that's my concern. I do like the bill, um, so I I'm not really entirely sure. Um, moving forward, what the best approach would be. Um, but I, and that, again, that was why it was only discussion, really, to get other members' feedback on it. Um, I, I wasn't looking for a vote of any kind tonight. So uh, I'm at an impasse. I don't know where to, to go. Um, certainly, if, if the board votes yes, I'll look for something. I'll talk to individual members and then see uh, what potential there is and then come back and then go to the legislatures. Um, I don't know. So, so, uh, and again, I'm not trying to make this difficult, but y if you were to discuss it with other members, you can't discuss it with more than one other member without being in violation of open meeting law. That's why, as you said, bring it back, have discussion, see where we want to take it to the legislature. But, um, it's it's there are just too many unanswered questions. I mean, you can you can you can research this law on your own, and I think that's what you were looking to do. But to take something to the legislature that we're we're, we're not even sure what we're asking them to to do. I just want to be clear of that. I, I just I don't want this board to go to the legislature and say, you know, we're concerned with this mass general law. We want to amend it, but we're not sure what we want to amend. Again, I wouldn't amend it, but yeah. that's why I came came here tonight uh, to ask what we would amend. Um, but I'm not. Other than Mr. Carpenter, who also voted for it at the last meeting, I haven't really heard any any big suggestions. So um, I don't know. I'm fine with not pursuing it either. Well, there's a motion and a second on the floor to go forward. I'll withdraw my second. Okay. I'll withdraw my motion then. 
Is there anything else on the board um, member items? Mm -hmm. We have no public comment. Um, we have the minutes of November 13th, 2018. Are there any question, questions? Are there any corrections or omissions? Mr. Holstrom. No questions or comment. Um, this was a tax classification hearing, and uh, there was a lot of information put out and forward. And uh, from what I've read through and looked at, uh, it's well done, and I want to thank Sharon for putting this together and uh, having that information uh, so well uh, presented. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Um, so this is our last meeting of 2018. I just want to say before we adjourn um, to whichever holiday you celebrate, those celebrating Hanukkah, as you come to the close of your season, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, whatever a holiday others celebrate, we wish you the best. Happy New Year, and we will see you after the first of the year. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Good night.